Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films. I have Knox from Ravens Elite back with me. You may have seen our previous video. Hey, what's going on, what's man? Going on? What's going on, Jason? What's going on, man? Glad for you to have me back in the building again, man. This is starting to become a routine thing now. Well, let's keep it that way, man. Let's keep it that way. So uh, don't leave don't leave me. I know that you have that great podcast with Jamil. Ravens Eat Elite coming out on those Mondays at four o'clock, right on time, every time, with some great interaction. Uh man, Ravens M. I, you know, I was going to do a moment of silence after I heard you, but I didn't want to copy. But I, I, I wanted to just, you know, obviously that was such a class move. And uh, Ravens M, in our hearts, we're thinking about you, M. If you're watching this, we love you. And, uh, you know, like I would say, football is family. But, uh, you know, I just uh, – I really appreciated that part of it. But uh, football season is here, Knox, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. at M&T Bank. Yeah, Sean Payton. Yeah, yeah the Saints. Man. We might see Jameis Winston. We might see uh, Taysom Hill. We don't know what we're seeing, and I don't think we really care. We're worried about ourselves in this game. I don't. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't. I, Jason, I, I don't know what we're seeing. That, that, I think that's the biggest question mark coming in. I mean, with no Drew Brees, not like Drew Brees would be playing in the preseason anyway. But still, like we don't know what to really expect. I mean, we know that Sean Payton is an offensive guru. Move. He's an offensive, you no know, great offensive mind, but. I mean, yeah, like I, I don't, I don't know what to really expect here. You put, you hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah, like, um, and 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 the thing it's I'm excited about is that's the way it goes in the regular season too. So having an <laughs> opportunity like this where you don't even know what quarterbacks play in, and they're two different styles, you can see two different complete completely different offenses. You're going to have that kind of thing. We saw it last year in that Philadelphia game when uh, everything yeah. seemed to be going okay. And so they brought in Jalen Hurts and it really threw us off balance. Um, so uh, a great chance for the Ravens to evaluate some players. So I wanted to bring Knox back on. I'm so glad he joined me to talk about some players and some things to look for this Saturday uh, as we finally get back to football and Ravens Elite finally gets their first football season together. So yes, Knox, sir. kick it off for me, uh, man. What are you What are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Give me a player or something to look for. Yeah, and I I, I think Odafe Away is 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 a guy that you know everybody should have their eyes on. I mean, I know my eyes is definitely going to be on. Like, you know, th this guy is a, a freak. I mean, this guy is like a freak athlete, and just to see how he stacks up against another team besides us. I mean, we've been seeing so much content against him going against our guys and him getting sacks and, you know, hearing uh, Jeff Zierbeck come out and say stuff, Jonah Shaper come out, Jameson Henley. They, they all got good reports coming out of him. So now it's just created this anticipation, like, all right, what is this guy going to do on the field? I can't wait to see it in action, like live game action, like – and it's it, I, I, that's one of the guys that I'm that I'm I'm looking for. You know, one of the few guys that I'm looking for um, to make. You know, just to see how 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 they use him, how Wink schemes the little things up. We know he's not going to show his whole hand. You know, some basic some basic blitzes or you know some basic stunts, whatever whatever he he dials up schematically. I'm gonna be definitely uh, interested. In. How, how about you, man? Who 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 catches your eye when you? when you look at this uh, first preseason game versus the Saints? Well, I'm going to talk about somebody uh, uh, that I'm really excited about that I don't think played enough <laughs> last year. It's a second-year player. He's a linebacker, number 40, Malik Harrison. Now, mm. I already know what Malik brings to the table, so I'm not saying, oh, I, I got to see him because I don't know what to expect. I know what to expect from Malik, and that's a guy that has great vision, great downhill linebacker. I mean, quite honestly, if I was the coach, I would have this man at Mike uh, on the strong side filling gaps. But uh, he's been asked to play a little bit of weak side, a lot of bit of weak side linebacker here. And I want to see how he develops in his coverage, Knox, and with the different mm -hmm. looks that Sean Payton will give you. And Sean Payton loves to put the defense, even with his vanilla game plan, I, I suspect we're going to be put in some disadvantageous situation with uh, Wink, of course, not breaking out his bag of tricks either. So how right. does Malik look in coverage is something that I'm going to be focused on. I know what Malik uh, brings as a run defender. I want to see if he has a good feel for where the route's going on behind him. That was kind of hit or miss as it is for any rookie. 
But Malik Harrison, one of my favorites, uh, a guy that I believe in. I think Knox, if it was 10, 15 years ago, he would have been a first-round pick, a linebacker. The game has changed. You have to be able to cover. The game has become more lighter, like the players are lighter, more athletic. Um, so mm -hmm. Malik Harrison, though, don't sleep on the former quarterback's athleticism and his instincts. This man is going to come to play. It's somebody that I really believe in. So I want to see how he handles the pass defense. And, uh, you know, with uh, LJ Fort being a veteran, maybe he doesn't see a ton of time in this game. I expect, uh, you know, Christian Welch and some others to fill in at linebacker. But we should also get a long look at Malik. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really looking forward to that, Knox. And how about you? I'll kick it back to you. Uh, who else or what else should we look for? I mean, if you're going to go with Malik, then I'm going to go with Patrick Queen. I think Patrick Queen is, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, rookie last year, um, had an exceptional rookie season. Um, but, you know, of course he got snubbed. I think he should have been defensive rookie of the year, defensive player of the year, in my opinion. Honestly, that's that's just the way he played in my eyes. And, you know, like you were talking about with, with Malik, I mean, you know, in coverage situations, we've seen that he did struggle um, on, on a certain – Certain, certain, certain games, you know, he struggled, but in his athleticism, you know, aided in some areas. But now I'm really intrigued to see how that works with Rob Ryan at the helm. Um, of course, he implemented some new drills as well. Um, and I've, I've been really interested in to see, like, how they, watching these guys put it all together on the field is just a thing that's been like, you know, building my anticipation and been just extremely intriguing, bro. I've, I've been, I've been smiling ever since we brought in Rob Ryan as a, as a uh, linebacker coach, because I know that he's going to teach toughness, um, physicality, and he, he's just going to bring that, that dog, you know, that, that dog mentality that, you know, a, a lot of guys, you know, don't have in them, you know, or, or they might have in them, but they it hasn't been unlocked yet. And I think that's the biggest thing with Patrick Queen, you know, just to see him put it all together, be consistently, consistently make plays and play fast like he's always been. But now, you know, again, again, honing in on the technical things and, you know, making it all, making it all work, man. Yeah, um, I, I think I wanted yeah, to Patrick add to Queen, your yeah. point, man. I wanted to add to your point there because, I think uh, Rob Ryan is the kind of guy like Knox, say we're going to some kind of, uh, you know, a stranger's house together or whatever. And, you know, we're just there and we're minding our business uh, like a rookie uh, player would be at a new team with, a you know, high expectations. We're all there. We're a little bit tight. And then imagine Rob Ryan comes into that room. What happens to that room? Like the pressure's off. Like I really think that uh, it'll allow Patrick Queen and Malik to be themselves more to open up. To show, I mean, Patrick Queen is not short on passion. Neither is Malik. No, I, I think it'll allow Rob Ryan helps allow them to be themselves. And uh, I, yeah, I, I love uh, I love the possibilities there between those two growing together in this Ravens defense. Yeah, I I, I love it too. I mean, I just just like we've we've been spoiled with <laughs> with the with these getting these uh, linebackers, man. These Mike linebackers getting you know C.J. Mosley and. Ray Lewis and, you know, just having had just always having like we knew that we were going to have a good linebacker at that position. And, um, you know, I, I just want to see, you know, I know he's he had a lot of added motivation. Um, part of it being snubbed last year for like I told you, that defensive player of the year reward. He definitely rightfully so deserved that, um, you know, to be the year without having offseason, you know, without having an offseason, mind you, no preseason games to show anything to anybody and he still played the way he did i mean i think that is exceptional and definitely deserve you know recognition in that in that room but um yeah man i mean any any other people that you know are you're thinking about yeah i am i i I'm really thinking about brandon stevens in this game he, he probably okay. he's probably going to be somebody i have the closest eye on because uh you know we're, we're not expecting to see jimmy out there jimmy smith out there um, and I've maintained all along, Knox, that I expect Brandon Stevens, despite his introduction as the next Ravens free safety, I expect Brandon C Stevens to be used kind of like he was at SMU last year. And that's that big cornerback that you can use or a dime safety in the defense. Now, the dime safety is actually the person who's closer to the line of the scrimmage. So I meant to say a deep safety and dime package there. But I mm -hmm. want to see how we're using Brandon Stevens. And I think it's really important 
Um, but he's a physical player. I don't think that you can question that being a former running back. He's an athletic player. Uh, you can mm -hmm. tell it by his numbers. So I think that this preseason is more about the mental side of the game for him. And I want to see how caught up mentally he is to the speed of the NFL game, not foot speed. I'm talking about the mental speed of the game. So um, not only from a schematic standpoint, like where are they lining them up and what are they asking them to do, but also how is his head, how is his football intelligence, uh, where is it at after being a running back as of, what, two or three years ago he was playing running back. So uh, right. quick transition for Brandon Stevens, man. And uh, before I throw it to you for another player, uh, what, what are your comments on Brandon Stevens? I think Brandon Stevens is, like I said, another intriguing prospect. I mean, you know, like you mentioned, a guy that was a running back for UCLA um, and, you know, transferred over to S SMU. Um, and, and you know, I mean, anytime that you're making a position change, it's, it, you always going to have like that eye. You, you add a target on your back, you know. Can this guy confidently do this? Can he be confident at this position? And can he, you know, get be consistent I, I feel like um once you start switching positions i mean that's always a hard thing to do is transition but i mean he's got some he, he's got that physicality that he's got from uh being a running back and he he does have some speed on him and he does have some length i mean he he, he has he has the intangibles i think it's all about like you said those real time reps that real game speed see how that transitions over and you know, like like you said, I mean, he can be in that dime package. You know, you can you can see him. You know, if it all works out that way, you know, seeing Deshaun Elliott and Chuck Clark, and then you know having him back in there, like that would be just a sight to see. You know how it would actually work. So, yeah, I'm, I definitely I definitely agree with uh, Brandon Stevens being an, another prospect to be looked at. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know how much we're going to mix up our defensive personnel. We might not see a ton of dime just because, you know, we're going to stay in base nickel defense most of the time. But if there are three safeties on the field, I want to see where Brandon Stevens is lining up. Do they trust him in the back end with that speed? But it's also a huge responsibility whenever you're the deepest defender on the field, the deepest of the deep. That's a huge responsibility. I mean, your play could cost us or save us a touchdown. So I want to see how they, not only, like I said, how is he playing, but where is he lining up to try to get some clue as to how we're going to use him in this defense. And another guy I'd, I'd like to ask you to uh, to give your opinion on before you switch to another player is Tavon Young. Do you think we're going to see Tavon play this Saturday? Uh, this Saturday? And uh, if you wanted to talk about Tavon and transition to another player, go right ahead, Knox. Uh, I think Tavon, I mean, I, at first when, when, when camp started, you know, I think that was every – fans dream to see Tavon, you know, out there in preseason. But due to the nature of these injuries, I, I, I kind of don't see it. I, I don't see John Harbaugh risking it, especially on, on a game, you know, a preseason game. Like, these guys, these games are, are primarily, and you know it well as I do, Jason, are primarily made. I think this year you're going to see the guys who are genuinely trying to make the team uh, play, you know, the meaningful minutes in, in these games here. I, I just – I don't see them really having any any starters out there. I mean, if it is, it'll be for, you know, maybe a one drive and a half or something like that or a couple snaps, but not not something where you – it's extensive where you see him, all right, man, yeah, Tavon Young, you know, second quarter, man, let's go. Like, no. no. Like, take this guy out. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see him actually playing in this game, and honestly, probably not even the whole preseason. Maybe the third preseason game, maybe uh, in Washington, you might see him like get in there a little, well, just to get his feet wet again, you know, fit, get a feel of it. But I, I, I just don't see John Harbaugh risking it. I just don't see it. Um, I just don't see it. And uh, as far as like another player that I'm looking at, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go Nate McCarry. Um, okay. Nate McCurry, uh running back. Uh, he he's got a running back with wide receiver number at eighteen, which I've I've never seen. But I was I was wondering, you know, I was that was the guy that I was at training camp, and I was like, who is number eighteen? Like, are they doing like end rounds or like who? Nah, like Nate McCurry. I mean, he popped off on the board. Like, I was gonna say, crazy. did you notice his speed at all? Uh, yeah, not... his speed, like, like uh, elusiveness. I mean that that's the one thing that I noticed right away. I'm just like, dang, this guy's so elusive. Like 
he was, he was, he was reminding me of, you know, kind of like JK, like, you know, with his elusiveness and get in and out of his cuts. And, you know, it was just like, he's not just a one speed guy. Like he can stop on a dime and then, you know, break tackles and how, how every, I, I mean, I'm just, I was astonished at what I saw by him because I was like, dang, like this is our, you know, fourth running back, basically fourth string behind, you know, Justice Hill and everybody else. When, and, and when I seen, I seen, you know, some situations where it was situational, um, <laughs> Uh, where I seen uh, that was that was a bad friend. I got to use, you. But, no, I, yeah, I was yeah, I was, on that. Hey, bro, I was <laughs> yeah, but basically, I was I was trying to say like, okay, so I seen Justice Hill in the game and Nate McCurry, and you seen Justice Hill, you know, run a little route, and then you see Nate McCurry take it out of backfield, and it was like, wow, like, bro, like, this is amazing, you know, like this is amazing. I mean, yeah, man, I, Nate McCurry is a guy that I just want to see, you know, what he has, you know, we know that. Um, Back in his 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 collegiate years, you know, he obviously didn't play in the SEC or he didn't play in the Big 12 or he didn't play in, you know, nothing too popular. But he still put up, you know, good numbers. And he and he showed that, you know, again, at least against competition, you know, collegiate level of competition. I mean, he stood out. So, I, you know, Ravens are always good at finding these gems. Um, and, and that's just one of them. That's another guy that I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, how he fares just in case. You never know what happens in the running back room, man. With, with, you know, I don't wish injuries on anybody. Knock on wood, you know. But hey, you never know. So I definitely want to see what what he has to offer as well. It's a good one, man. That's a good one. I, you know, I I should have asked you about him when we were talking about you attending training camp because, you know, you get a feel for things as a film guy, and the, the film on uh, McCrary is 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 hard to find. So, you know, the one thing that I noticed was. Man, I know he's playing, you know, guys that are not going to make the NFL or even sniff a, you know, an invite, uh, camp invite. But <laughs> my God, is he flying? Like it, it was, it was, a, it was yeah. a different speed. It was a different speed. And I could see his speed playing even at an NFL level with the, the huge jump that he's got and the long shot probably to make the roster. But uh, if you want a home run hitter, I, I, I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear that his, his speed was flashing at training camp and, is elusiveness because that's something that I didn't see. You know what I mean? I didn't have enough tape to really form an opinion yeah. on that. So he, he can cut and make you miss too, huh? Yeah, he can cut and make you miss. And I mean, like I said, when I was seeing him practice, he was going against, you know, Owen and Patrick Queen and, you know, all the, the whole the whole team, bro, the, the whole first team, first team defense. So it wasn't like he was out there playing against, you know, the third string guys and, you know, guys that, assumably be on the uh, special teams and stuff like that. Nah, he was doing this moves against, you know, Owe and Calais Gabble and them. So that was really showing me like, dang, bro, who is this guy? Man, and, that's you know, beautiful. obviously, yeah, and his jersey number stood out more than anything, number 18. I mean, you never see that on a running back. I've never seen that. You know, I don't know if it's a practice jersey or whatever, but, I mean, he sticks with that way. He'll definitely stand out just off of that alone. But, yeah, what do you – so who do you think, like, um, uh, it'd be hard to say, but I mean, if you had to think, who who do you see like consistently, consistently making an impact on all three of these preseason games? I feel like I'll, I'll throw out a name for you here that I don't think people have talked about at all. Who I think actually has a chance to stick with this organization, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a guy that we cut but we bring back on the practice squad, and that is the tight end, six foot seven, Tony Poljan. Mm, I was thinking about him, bro. That was my guy. I'm telling you, Knox, like, you know, when you look at his history, he was the Michigan State Player of the Year as a dual threat quarterback. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know how tall he was back then, but at six foot seven <laughs> and, and pushing three bills uh, at this age, like, uh, can you imagine an uh, option quarterback running a, a Lamar style, uh, you know, read option at six foot seven, almost 300 pounds? Like, this guy, Whoa. like, you know how awkward uh, people get when they get so tall. Like, it's hard to be graceful, that muscle memory. You look mm -hmm. you, lo you look kind of, like, lanky and out of place. And I did see that somewhat with Tony in his uh, Virginia highlights, but he played uh, quarterback at Eastern Michigan, too. So, like Brandon Stevens, he made a late switch, a career decision to play tight end, 
transferred to Virginia. I believe he was a graduate student, Knox. So he's yeah. got a lot of uh, experience there. Uh, but six foot seven, and although he does move a little bit clunky at times, I mean, he can high point the ball at six foot seven and has the body mm -hmm. control to get those two feet down. You could see that in his touchdowns in college. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that with the health situation of Nick Boyle, and you don't want anything to happen to Mark Andrews this preseason, uh, Josh, uh, Josh Oliver might come into the, hey, we want to kind of take it easy with this guy because we see him being the third tight end. Uh, so when you phrase the question as who we're going to lean on for three games, I could see that being Tony Poljan, and I could see him mm -hmm. carving out a long-term role on this team. Now, what I would be looking for specifically from him is his inline blocking, as you talked about, that wide tight end, because just because you're a huge man doesn't mean that you can – uh, block a defensive end, and in that case, Knox, I think being six foot seven kind of works against you from a, a leverage standpoint. Like mm -hmm. defensive ends could should be able to to uh, get underneath of him, and considering also he's new to the position. So how can this right. really right. tall big man can he block a defensive end without getting uprooted? And what's his technique like? So what do you think on? Uh, can you just comment on my comments first before you move on? Yeah, I think Tony Poljam, I mean, you, you heard, as soon as you said the name, I just immediately, I mean, I was I was on us, you know, I wanted us to draft him, honestly. And, it, you know, I mean, even if it took, like, you know, those later rounds, but, I mean, the the value that we got with those later round picks, I'm not mad at all, you know. I will, and the fact that we got Tony as a, you know, undrafted free agent was was mind blowing could because I thought for sure he was going to get drafted. I mean, Tony, like you said, the size is the first thing that sticks out. And then his athletic ability is not something that, you know, should be slept on. Um, we, we seen him make those, those athletic catches, you know, it's all in his highlights and stuff like that. I mean, he, he's made those athletic catches and him, another guy being, you know, a former quarterback, <laughs> you, you already know that he knows where to be. You know, he knows where to be as far as, you know, be that safety blanket for the quarterback because obviously you play the position. So you would only think that he would know certain spots and certain find those holes in the defense, you know, where to just sit down in those zones and stuff like that, find those holes in those zones. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you, you pretty much said it all, man. I mean, like, I'm intrigued to see how that, how that pans out. I definitely see that he'll be a guy that they'll lean on, obviously, without, having Nick Boyle um, and Mark Andrews, you don't want anything to happen there. And, you know, definitely seeing Josh Oliver on some type of snap count because, I mean, at this point, he's separated himself from the pack. I don't see, you know, anybody catching on. I mean, I feel like it'll be a Tony Poljan, Eli Wolf type of ordeal probably going on. Um, that's, that, that's pretty much how I see it. Yeah, and I think Tomlinson makes this team if Boyle's not ready mm -hmm. because, because he did such a good job seamlessly coming in midseason and taking right. a, a good deal of Boyle's blocking responsibilities. Right. Of course, Pat Ricard took over some, but uh, Eric Tomlinson did a really good job for this team. And if oh, yeah. Nick Boyle's oh, yeah. not ready, Tomlinson is going to be getting some playing time, some snaps, I believe, uh, week one. So I, I think you need a guy like that. Um, also, Knox, I wanted to get your opinion on – Tyree Phillips and Bradley Bozeman. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because they're both veterans, quote unquote, uh, younger players, but veterans on the first contract, uh, albeit. But, um, you know, we kind of need uh, some steady presence in this offensive line to be able to mm -hmm. evaluate, to properly evaluate these receivers, tight ends, the backup quarterbacks, which I want to get to. Don't let me forget the, the backup quarterback. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I want to see how Bozeman's snaps are, how he is moving to the second level, what kind of blocking assignments we're asking from him. And I also want to see if they're playing Tyree at tackle. Uh, I would love to see him be an option there at tackle. He might be our best left guard. I think you said to me off camera, if he's our best left guard, hey, uh, just roll with it. I'll, I'll, I'll clean it up for the TV. But if he's our, if he's our uh, best left guard, the heck with it, put him there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Phillips and Bozeman – how much do you think uh, that they will play? Are they going to just play the 10, 15 starter snaps that we've seen from Harbaugh? Or are they going to get a little bit more extended run so we can actually have a functional offense and give the other players a chance? Yeah, I think I think the, they'll get a more of an extended run. 
Um, just for the simple fact that Bradley Bowman is new to this position as far as playing center. Um, and you want to get him as many game reps as you can get him. I mean, you know, granted, yeah, preseason, preseason, but still, it's game time reps. You want to get him more comfortable at that position. So week one, he'll be ready to go. Um, Tyree Phillips, again, at the left guard position, you know, you definitely want to see – I think he's going to get an extended amount of run just because I know that they've been cautious, kind of cautious with Ben Cleveland as well. Um, he wasn't at today's practices either. So I think that, you know, you, you got to have you got to have those guys in. I mean, because if you don't, I don't know who you're going to put in at that point. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at that point, you'll be you'll be just taking a whim and. Whoever's playing quarterback might as well just play with the uh, with a blindfold on because yeah, yeah. you don't know where those pressures are coming from and who's going to get sacked. You know, I I wouldn't trust it that much to have these guys just play some snaps and just take them out. You know, granted, yeah, we get it. Backup quarterbacks. I don't expect to see Lamar out there at all, but I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't risk. It's it's you don't want that to become at the expense of your backup. You know that value that quality. You, you don't want that to become. Uh, just because you take these guys out for limited snaps and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, kind of curious to see how Harbaugh's plan evolves with the injury situation that we have on offense. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, you know, quite frankly, I like the fact that John Harbaugh changed. He uh, he changed the philosophy on preseason games, and I think other teams will eventually follow that. Now it used to be Knox that you didn't play him uh, hardly at all in the first preseason game. Second preseason game, they got a quarter. Third preseason game, they got a half, maybe into the third quarter, and then you rested them completely in the fourth quarter. But what John Harbaugh has done is he wanted to play them 10, 15 snaps, a drive or two, like you said, in every single game, just to keep them in that flow but protect them at the same time. The problem that right. we have now is we have a huge evaluation process uh, at backup quarterback, and we also have so many injuries on the offensive line that it mm -hmm. really changes. It could change Harbaugh's philosophy so I'm intrigued to see how much he plays uh, guys like Bozeman and Tyree Phillips. Uh, you know, does Alejandro Villanueva get 10 snaps just so he can operate on that first drive and, and get an idea, or maybe one drive with Huntley, one drive with McSorley. You know, it's a, it's a guessing game to me, and I can see it fall in a bunch of different ways. Um, Knox, we got to talk yeah. about these quarterbacks, though. G give me what you're looking for from Huntley and McSorley, and I'll, I'll take my two minutes after you're done, too, on those guys. Yeah, I think I think from Huntley, you want to see. I mean, these guys have been able to, you know, it's not like we haven't seen anything from them. I mean, that's been pretty much the whole training camp has been those guys for the most part. So it's like you want to see them continue on um, just doing what they've been doing. I mean, pretty much developing at the position and proving themselves who should be number two and who will be number three. And I think that Tyler Huntley has, I mean, he's been showing me like, from the throws that I've seen with him, you know, those those deep ball accuracies and just him assessing certain um just reading certain plays, uh, I think, you know, read read certain coverages. That's pretty much what I want to see from Tyler Huntley, being able to read, recognize and then, you know, execute. Um that's 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 just the biggest thing that I want to see from Tyler Huntley um consistently is just the read, recognize and execute. Um and then from um uh, Money. McSorley, yeah, yeah, yeah. McSorley, uh, you know, throw it on a dime, McSorley. Um, you pretty much want to see, you know, I mean, what he still got, you know. Like, I think that it's been a balanced situation. Both of them had some good days. McSorley had it, may may have a bad day. Tyler Huntley have a good day. Tyler Huntley have a good day, bad day. McSorley have a good day. You know, you just want to see it balance out. You want to see level of consistency. I think it's no magic thing of what I want to see or what they're going to show us. Just who's going to be the most consistent? Who's going to make the best throws consistently, routinely? And as Mike Tomlin always say, I mean, you know, not too much of a Steelers fan past that point, but he does have some quotes that I'm like, make routine plays routinely. And that's that's pretty much what you want to see from both of these uh, quarterbacks, you know, just who, who can consistently make plays, you know, so – and and get the ball in the playmakers' hands as well, um, picking up this offense. So, yeah, that's I, uh, nice. I tell you, I urge fans to keep an open mind on this situation. It seems like, you know, anything quarterback knocks, people get really dug into their opinions. And that's not just Ravens fans. <laughs> right. That's fans of any fan base if you keep up with them. 
People are passionate. Obviously, it's the most important position in sports, uh, the starting quarterback. Uh, so uh, keep an open mind this preseason. If you think McSorley's better or if you think Huntley's better, please. You, I mean, as Ravens fans, we want to see both of them play well. We want to see both of them do well, show out, and have confidence in either one. Because I tell you what, Knox, like, I think that I'm, uh, I have a lot of people against me on this point of view. But I could definitely see us, and I would sleep a little better at night if we kept three quarterbacks, especially with the COVID protocols, how they are. Mm -hmm. um, if an injury happens and somebody gets COVID, then all of a sudden we're picking somebody off the street. Like, um, <laughs> right. if, and I don't, right. I don't think that uh, McSorley, Mc, McSorley or Huntley will make it through waivers. I think that there's a strong chance that either one of those guys could get claimed. Uh, you know how – uh, important quarterback play is and you know uh, we have extended rosters so somebody will have a spot for them so if uh, we don't keep them and we cut them and they're not part of the 53 I could easily see a quarterback saying oh well Trace is better than the guy we have or Huntley shows oh man we could at least run this offense with with Huntley um, so exactly. I'm, rooting, I'm rooting for both of them I'm rooting for good offensive line play I want to see these guys get a chance to throw uh, with timing, to not be so rushed. I mean, of course, you know, the, the line's going to break down during a regular season game, and you have to make right, the best of right, that. But right. but just don't be a complete crap show out there to where these guys, <laughs> we can't evaluate these guys. So I, you know, I kind of, you know, I, I don't have a good view. I've seen both of them play, but not enough to where I can say, oh, yeah, I like this guy better than that guy. Um, and I think that it's a misconception out there that, Huntley fits better in the system than McSorley. Maybe you disagree with that, but like from a running standpoint, obviously Tyler Huntley is electric. Like, um, but you know we still throw the ball a lot. Lamar, uh, like Lamar, is a pretty darn good passer too. So, uh, being a running quarterback yeah. doesn't mean just because you're a great runner doesn't mean you're a better fit in our system. We're still going to throw the ball 50, 60 percent of the time. So, uh, man, what a what a battle there. Uh, is there anybody else that you want to touch on? Or if you want to speak again on the quarterbacks, give me something to wrap up here on Knox. I know you got something else over there. Yeah, I think, you know, just one more player, and that's our Darius Washington. Um, our Darius Washington has been a guy that, you know, a lot of fans have been, you know, it grew on a lot of fans. First, first they were doing that who thing, like we would always say, like, who is this guy? But now it's like it's been growing on fans, and you start to hear his name a lot. Um, and, I mean, our Darius, you know, I mean, I I thought he was a first round talent, you know, second round at, at best, you know. I mean, size is always played to his detriment, unfortunately. But I mean, his instincts, you know, I I would love to see it on full display. I mean, you're going to see it on full display in the preseason, and um, they've been asking Wink Martindale, and he said, "Yeah, like we'll see." You know how his preseason. I mean, for for everything that I've seen, he was there. You know, he was on the ball. I mean, every play that I've seen in pre in training camp, um, he was there. I mean, his instincts, you know, they are real. They are, you know, they, they hold value. And I just want to see him, you know, is he going to be that guy for us and, and sit, just make plays, man. I mean, that that's just what keeps you on the team um, at the end of the day, you know, just consistently making plays and showing that, you know, yeah. It's going to make it a tough decision for coaches to cut you or, or, you know, keep you here. You know, when it comes down to breaking that down for that 53-man roster, you want to feel like you left it all on the field. You, you let these guys know, you know, everything they've seen in the scouting report, everything that they have, you know, assessed you, evaluated you on, you proved that. And you didn't leave any wasted, you know, opportunity here. So that's that's one guy that I'm intrigued to see, you know, it's been some good. It's been some bad things said, you know. But I, I, I want to see him put it all together as well on the field, um, just to, you know, because we still want to, still want to have that safety, you know, show up that safety spot, especially when we go to that down package, just to see, you know, who could, who could be there. And like you said, I mean, it's been a lot of injuries, so you never know who might be called upon. Yeah, um, I want to back you up on your very first point because I've actually said this. I don't know if you watched the video, uh, but. I've said this. If he ran a four four three or whatever Antoine Winfield mm -hmm. ran, he would have been a picked around where Antoine Winfield was, in my opinion, because right. he is. Uh, I've said this before. Just probably the best few, pure football player as far as instincts went in this draft. Uh, a guy who has a nose for the football. 
I sat there and watched Trevor Merrick because he was a possible target for us. And it kept, it was the Ardarius Washington show. Like anywhere the ball is, he is. And that's some of that stuff knocks. You, you could try to coach it into somebody, but you can't teach the natural skills and instincts. I mean, this, right. this guy's instincts uh, and his nose for the ball is up there. And we've seen players like Tavon Young, uh, Antoine Winfield make an impact as smaller players. It's the four six that Ardarius ran that really took him yeah. from uh, early yeah. round pick to a mid round pick to straight out the draft. I want this guy to make the team knocks because I believe in our strength and conditioning program. I think he still has some upside as far as his speed and his strength will go, but he has something that you can't teach or can't coach, even though that's a strong phrase and that's his natural instincts and uh, ability is just a plain out flat out football player. I mean, it's our Darius Washington. So, um, and the one thing that I want to look for, for him too, kind of like what I mentioned with Brandon Stevens is where is he lining up? I want to see if they trust him in the slot. I heard uh, Ken McCusick and Kyle Barber report on Ken McCusick's uh, film study, Baltimore Pom podcast, which everybody should follow that our Darius was matched up in the slot and of course, those guys don't want to give away the whole shebang. I, I think that they're, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a professional thing. You don't really want to talk about the specifics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. But, you don't. But, yeah. Yeah, but we'll be able to see for ourselves in the preseason uh, if they trust Ardarius in the slot, uh, covering slot receivers, or if I mentioned like with Brandon Stevens, if they trust him in the bet on the back end, either as a split safety or a single high safety. So I want to see where, specifically where they play Ardarius Washington, because I have no doubt that his, uh, his acumen and his football ability will be there. It's, it's the most translatable skill, Knox, is if you're a ball player with good vision, I classify it as vision. If you have good vision and instincts, that will translate 100% of the time, unlike speed, strength, other qualities that people look for, route running, a lot of that stuff – doesn't translate, uh, but being a baller and being in the right place at the right time, trust trust your boy over here, Knox. That translates. Oh, yeah, that's a, uh, for sure. Yeah, I, and I've seen it over the years, and our Darius Washington has that in spades, man. Like, he's got it. Right, yeah, I definitely want to see him. And, of course, I'm, I'm Chris Westry, you know, see, yeah. see just the, the whole secondary, you know, just, just want to see, I mean, him, Sean Wade, of course, all, all these guys – you just want to see all these all these guys, you know, these new pieces that we got, these new additions, to just to see, you know, how they put it all together on the field. I mean, because that's what it comes down to. They, they, but guys can have good days in practice. They can do well here, do bad this day. But if you put it all together in the preseason, that's when it counts. It counts in the preseason when it's on full display and when everybody, you know, it's a real, like, real-time reps, real game-time reps that we talk about. And you're putting every, all the knowledge that you acquired, you know, Everything that you acquired, now you're going to be able to use that in the preseason. And, yeah, and then you know, try to earn the spot on the team. The number one thing, Knox, before we wrap it up, health. Let's just make it through yeah. healthy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I made a post on Twitter that the difference between an 11 and 6 team and an 8 and 9 team is a few healthy players and the bounce of a ball. And uh, that's really the way I feel. I mean, you know how thin the margin for error is in the NFL. It doesn't take much right. to turn it around. Games are close. Games are won and lost on if you know people like to blame the officials, but that that's just how close it is. One call can cost you the game. The bounce of a ball can cost you the game. A few injuries can cost you the game. So let's just stay healthy first and foremost, uh, and let it play out from there. But we went over some fun things and fun things to watch, and uh, some great players. Chris Westry, glad you mentioned him at the end. Yeah. That went that one shouldn't yeah. have uh, that shouldn't have taken so long for us to get to. I mean, right. six four with that kind of speed. I think it was a four three six. Uh, I try to remember yeah. all the numbers, but six four four three six, long player, cornerback. Man, he uh, he's going to be a tough guy to cut too. I would imagine Knox. Yeah, he's going to be a tough guy. I mean, I, I look, like you said. I mean, when I was there, I seen him get a bunch of pass breakups, and pretty much, you know, like I said, he was on the island. So I mean, you anybody you put on that island with him, it wasn't going to be a good decision, you know. Or you you either it wasn't going to be a good decision, or you just got lucky. It was going to be one of the two. <laughs> Man, so that's 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 what I've seen with my own eyes. There is that you know. This guy is definitely one. It can has the potential to be one of those you know, shut down corners in there. Well, guys, I want to thank you uh, very much for watching. Knox, thank you as always. It's been too long. Uh, I know you're a busy man and you got your brand building over there. <laughs> 
couldn't be more yes, proud of, of you and Jamil for all the work that you're doing. So I wanted to thank you uh, very much for taking the time and joining me on my channel. Much love. Yes, Go sir. follow Knox. The links will be in the description. I always hook them up. I'll be retweeting. I'll be trying to spread the word as much as possible. Love your content with Jamil over there. So thank you so much, Knox, for joining me today. Of course, man. Jason, anytime that you bring me on here, you know, we try to provide the best content as possible, man. And I appreciate you for giving me another opportunity to voice my, you know, perspective on uh, the state of the Ravens, man. Appreciate you. Yep. Appreciate your podcast as well. You always provide good content, educating the community. And, you know, a lot of guys, you know, if it wasn't for your film study and, you know, how you prepare, I mean, guys like me wouldn't have certain things to go off of, you know, so it, it definitely provides a new perspective, man. I appreciate it. Hey, man, it's, it's all love. I really appreciate you guys. Good people, great podcast. I mean, it's just, or the other way around, great people with a good podcast, great people with a great yeah. podcast, however yeah, you want to put it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, a horse by other any other name is still the horse, I think is an old phrase. Maybe I messed that up too. Knox, you know, in my old age, man, I get these phrases yeah, messed up. I, man, I have no right idea, here, man. man. All I know is if you're playing a game of spades with Knox and Jamil, they're going to have the big joker, the little joker, the two, the ace, and the king. Maybe a couple <laughs> maybe a couple other aces on there. They probably got the ace hey, of hearts, yo. ace of dime. Hey, Knox, you know I played some spades back in the day. I got. I know you was getting right, man. Yeah, I, I got. I know you was, I, yeah, I already know. I already know, man. You done played about every game there is to play, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? If it's a game, Jenga, I want to play it. If, you know? Yeah, Jenga. Hey, man, Jenga. Uh, my my <laughs> no, wife you, does you not have. like Jenga. My wife thinks Jenga, it makes her nervous. Makes her too nervous. <laughs> and that thing starts to yeah. pile up. She can't take yeah, the anxiety. Yeah, I, I, I can it. only imagine that anxiety going crazy after that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're trying to, like, push the table a little bit. Yeah, you can see the yeah, screen boy. shaking. Yeah, I just bumped into it, Knox. I didn't mean to do that. I, I just yeah, bumped into one block, it. one block. That's it, man. One block. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. So don't play me in spades. I know how to cheat very well. Um, learned that a long time ago. But uh, yeah, if it's a game, I'll play it, man. But hey, that's enough of us rambling on. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Football is family. And we'll catch you next time. Say goodbye, Knox. All right, man. See you guys. See you, Ravens Fox. Appreciate you guys' time listening. All right. Love y'all.